If you're a serious content creator or influencer, you need a media kit. Having a bomb media kit can help empower you to present yourself as a business owner, highlight your strengths, and most importantly, secure paid brand collaborations with companies that you already use and love. Hey there everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Austin and I am a fashion and beauty content creator based in New York City. If you are an influencer or content creator who is looking to grow your community, get better at content creation and monetize your influence, please consider subscribing to my channel. I put out new videos every Tuesday with tons of tips and tricks with everything you need to know. And don't forget to turn on your notifications so that you never miss a video from me. I've been a digital content creator for almost 10 years, and even though I'm a micro-influencer, I've been able to partner with some absolutely amazing fashion and beauty brands that I love. And I know that one of the things that sealed the deal in most cases was sharing my media kit with those brands. A media kit can help a brand get to know you beyond the surface level insights. So beyond your Instagram followers, they wanna know a bit about who you are, who your audience is, who they're going to be paying to be putting themselves and their products in front of, and what you can offer that's different and unique from other content creators. So in today's video, I want to share my screen with you and show you step-by-step step how you can create a beautiful media kit for free using Canva, which is a website that I absolutely love and have been using for years. So I'm really going to show you exactly how you can do this on your own. Now, this video is actually a follow-up to one of my previous videos all about what to include in your media kit. And that video is more of an overview about media kits, why they're important, and the things that I think are most important for you to include and why. So if you need a bit more of an overview, feel free to go watch that video first and then come back for the tutorial after. Let me share my screen and we'll get right into the tutorial. Hey guys, so I want to show you how to create a media kit step-by-step -step in Canva. And before I open up Canva, one thing I would encourage you to do before you start just to make this process super seamless and easy for you is to take the five main things that we're going to be including in this media kit and prepare them in a Google Doc so you can just copy and paste the information over. So the five things that I want to make sure you include are a bit of background info about you, your follower statistics, your contact information, your audience insights, so sharing the age, gender, and location of your audience on your main platform. I'll use Instagram as an example here the services you offered, and then one bonus tip that you can kind of throw in if you want to is previous brand partners. If you don't have any, don't worry about it. Um, but if you do have some that you want to show off, I would recommend including them as well. So let's go ahead and open up Canva now. And the first thing we're going to do is type into the search bar on Canva. Oh, and if you don't have a Canva account, it's totally free to create one and everything I'm going to be showing you. We'll be using a free Canva account. Uh, there will be a link down below in the description box to get signed up for Canva. You are just going to search for Media Kit because what's amazing about Canva is they have so many different templates and designs for different media kits depending on what you're looking for. And if I move me up here for a second, you can see on the sidebar here, you can choose from different styles, patterns, um, colors that might stand out to you, and you'll be able to scroll through over here. And if you hover over them, it will show what the first and second pages of these different media kits look like. So I typically like things that look pretty clean and that we can use really easily and that look straightforward, that aren't clogged with too many different things going on. So I think I'm going to pick this media kit template to start out with. And you'll want to tweak some of these templates to add in all of the information that I recommend including those five different things. I am just going to start altering this media kit with different information. So I can click on the text box here and then I can change this to AT if I were making it for myself. Maybe I would put my logo at the top over here too if I wanted to drag and drop something in. And I could also go to my uploads in this section over here and drag in a few different images if I wanted to. So for some reason, there's this speckled layer over top here. I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that so I can get to what is underneath here. And I can even drag in some of my own images 
that I've already uploaded to Canva. So I've uploaded these images in advance, but since I have a few right here, I'll just pop them in. And then I want to see if I have more of a headshot type photo that I can include in this sort of main section here. So I can drag and resize the photo. And you may notice that Canva actually has a black and white filter on this photo, which if you don't want to have that on yours, if you go over to edit image, we can see that the saturation was all the way down there. So I can just reset these sliders to what they normally were. And I've got my regular photo here. So I'm just going to grab my background info that I already typed up from my Google Doc and copy, select the text, and then paste it in here. And I may need to resize this a little bit, or I could drag you know, this image box up a little bit to make more room for this down here. And I can obviously swap this template name for my name and title. And I just dragged the text over a little bit to reposition it so it didn't look too squished. Um, so those are the first things that I threw in. Next, I want to make sure I add my following on different social media platforms as well as my contact information. So this media kit has already added a few different social media platforms here. And rather than put the handle underneath, because my handle is the same across all of the different social media platforms, this is where I would pop in my follower count. So I would say for Pinterest, how many followers I have. Maybe I wouldn't have Facebook because I don't have that many Facebook followers here, um, but just start kind of plugging and playing. And if I want to swap any of these icons, one thing I can do over here is go to elements on the sidebar of Canva, and I can search for different social media icons that match this. So I can search for Instagram, and I'm going to get a bunch of different options over here. I'll sort them by my free options just for anyone who is not going to be using a pro account to do this. And you can see all of the free icons that pop up for Instagram. So I'm going to pick this one and you can change the color. So even though it looked white on the sidebar, you can make it black. Um, it just did that automatically for me for some reason. But if you want to change the color, you just go to this little color box up here. And so I am actually going to delete that blogging icon and add in Instagram instead, because Instagram is a platform that I have a bigger following on. And I'll resize it and make sure it lines up with the others too. So this is where I'll type in my Instagram following. And I'm going to do the same for TikTok, because that is the other platform that I like to use. If I want to make the whole thing black, I'm actually able to just so that it fits in with the rest of this template. I'm just going to make that smaller, get rid of this RSS feed icon. And now I have my TikTok followers listed as well. So next I'm going to do my contact information. This person has their address and their email address. Um, you don't have to give out any contact information you don't want to, but at the very minimum, I recommend having your email as well as your main social media handle so that people can find you if they want to. And I'm just going to drag this up actually a little bit and then drag this bar up a little too. You can also use your arrow keys to be a bit more precise instead of dragging things around just so that it looks a little more streamlined. So boom, like there's the first page of the media kit. I've been doing this for just about five minutes and that's looking great. And then here is another page of the media kit where I'm gonna add some of the additional information I wanna make sure I include. So I included the first three main things. And the next thing I wanna add is my audience insights. So I uploaded these screenshots of my Instagram analytics over here to Canva. And what I'm going to do is basically just rearrange this template a little bit. So I'm going to get rid of those extra icons. And I want to see if I am able to stretch this 
box to take up more of the screen because I kind of like the idea of having a background. So I'm just going to move around some of these different boxes and make room for the information that I want to add in. So when I click it, it will appear on the screen. So I was able to drag this gray box. I think it just helps section it off a little bit. It's not necessarily a must have. And you can also change the color of the gray box if you want to, to match your personal brand. You could even change the fonts. Canva has a ton of free fonts that you can use on your media kits. And yeah, so I just want to center these as much as possible. I love the handy little guides on Canva. I feel like it helps make it look more legit. And I'll probably change this underneath statistics to Instagram audience insights, top cities, age group, and gender. Oh, can't spell today. Um, and that's for if Instagram is your main platform. If YouTube is your main platform or Pinterest, go grab your insights from ideally the last 30 days to have on your media kit. Um, I think that's kind of the most recent reflection and something brands like to see. And then down here, this little box that says specialties, this is where I actually want to put the services that brands can hire me to do. And I kind of like how it's separated by the little lines here. So I can actually go back and grab my list of services offered and paste that right in here. And I can do exactly what she did. So I won't show you the whole boring process of doing this, but I will hit backspace and then hit the little line icon on my keyboard to separate all of the different services that a brand could hire me for. And you can also zoom in to make sure you're not cutting anything off here. So let me speed through the rest of this process. And I will just try to drag it here and make sure that it is centered when you see that solid purple line up here. That's one way to center it. You can also tap on the three dots up here and go to position and tap center. It's already in the center, so there's nowhere for me to move it to. But if you're not sure, you can use that feature. And so now I've got my services here. And down here where it says testimonial is where I want to put some of the brands that I've worked with. You can definitely include any testimonials too. I think that seeing brand logos is a big sign to other brands that you have legitimacy and that you've worked with previous brand partners. Um, and it's kind of just the most simple way to communicate your previous clients. I'm actually going to copy this text box up here with AT in that header font and come down to this page and paste it. Pop it there, but I'm just going to bring it back down. And then up here, I will say previous brand, whoops, <laughs> partners. I'm going to make sure that that text box is dragged out. And I'm also just going to make it smaller and rearrange this final box down here. And there you have it, you guys. That is a super simple media kit with all of the information that you'll want to include to make sure you can stand out to your potential brand partners. If you want a bird's eye view, you can click on this little stack down here and see what both pages look like together. And again, I think this is probably the simplest version of a media kit that I would recommend creating. My media kit is actually four pages long and does a deep dive into my audience analytics for my four biggest platforms, which are Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, and TikTok. So just something to consider. You could always beef this out a little bit more. I think the most important thing with the media kit is that you're providing a brand with more value than they can get from just glancing at your Instagram page. So I love how this looks. And in order to save your media kit, you're going to tap on the arrow up here in Canva and you're going to download it. PDF print is a super, super high quality version of your content. I typically recommend using PDF standard because it'll be smaller when you send it as an email attachment to brands. Make sure all of the pages are selected, hit download, and just make sure if you have the name that came with the media kit, that simple grunge media kit at the top, um, that you change the file name in your downloads. And that is how you create a media kit in Canva. 
Now, if you really wanna get your social media profiles prepped and looking as perfect as they can be before you pitch brands, before you send this media kit out, I highly recommend downloading my free guide. It's called the Influencer Launchpad and it was created just for you. When a brand lands on your social media profiles, it's so important that they see you're consistently creating high quality content so that they'll wanna work with you. So the Influencer Launchpad is your crash course to figuring out how to create a consistent posting schedule, what your strengths are as a content creator, and I even throw in some tips about how to make any of your photos, even if they're shot on an iPhone, look totally professional and amazing. So you can grab that free guide at the link down below in the description box, or you can simply head to austintosone.com slash subscribe, and that'll also put you on my free weekly newsletter all about content creation and the creator economy. Thank you all again so much for watching today's video. As I mentioned in the beginning, if you're new here, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new videos every Tuesday. If you have any requests for future videos, leave them down in the comments below and please give me a thumbs up down below if you learned something new and if this video helped you out. Thanks again for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you guys in next week's video. Bye.